thank you. And hello, everybody. It, it's absolutely wonderful to, to get to chat to you. Uh, so my name is Tidi um, from the South Africa team, the COIL South Africa team. And um, together with Jason, we will share some updates with you about the progress that we've done in integrating Tiger Beetle into Waterloo. Um, so just in January 2021, so almost a, uh, a year to the day, um, we had Adrian and Yorick talk to the community, just introducing Tiger Beetle um, into the community and talking about some of the problems that it some of the some of the things that Jason into the central ledger and seeing some of the testing and the outcomes that we're, that we're seeing that we're seeing to date. Um, Jason, could you take me to the next slide, please? Thank you. So, so just very briefly, we'll look at the mission of Tiger Beetle. We'll look at how work has progressed over time. We'll talk about the work of integrating into, into the central ledger, and then we'll go into the detail around testing some of those observations. And then we'll talk about what, what happens after today, some of the next steps, and, and what the year looks like as, as we move ahead. Next slide, please. So let's, let's take a step back and just recap on what Tiger Beetle is and how it fits into our conversations about, about modern, right? Um, so what Tiger Beetle is, is a distributed database that's built specifically for the domain of financial accounting. It's built particularly in mind with, um, I guess, the objective of moving the logic that's typically, or would typically be sitting in the application layer, the accounting thinking, the accounting logic, the business rules, moving that into, into the database so that all of that happens natively within the database. And just seeing how that can potentially change really how how systems work and, and, and how they perform, right? So the mission really is to make it easier to build and to run or to operate uh, the financial systems of the future, right? Or the next generation of financial systems. Haley, just to jump we, in here really quickly, um, can you move a sure. little bit closer to the microphone? Um, we're getting a lot of echo from your audio. All right, is that any better or, or not? That's slightly better. Slightly better, okay. Uh, Cool, I'll continue. If it's, if it's not bearable, I'll, I'll make a quick adjustment. Okay, so the three killer, the, the three key pillars that Tiger Beetle is built on are their quality, sorry, they are the safety, they are performance, and, and developer experience, right? And safety in particular puts, puts focus on durability and data quality, so quality of data and, and then resiliency of the overall system, where performance, um, puts a focus on growth and scalability. It puts that within reach and it makes it possible then to have conversations around managing and potentially reducing the total cost of ownership of a system based on, on resources and, and the infrastructure that it needs, entering the developer and what they need to be able to extend and to maintain the system. So the design of Tiger Beetle is such, such that the abstraction, the programming language itself that's used, the APIs that are exposed, also these objectives of enhancing the developer's experience. And so the idea is to reduce the effort and the time and really the level of expertise that it would take to ramp up on, on being able to get a, a project up and running, being able to get a developer or the deployment, um, deployment, deployment environment ready, getting actual development work, um, in, uh, going and then of course maintaining maintaining um, the work or project. Next slide please Jason. All right so let's let's take a look at the timeline and just talk about some of the benchmark testing that that, that has been happening since about July 2020 when the first prototype was done. Um, the first benchmark results gave us about 400,000 TPS or transactions per second that we're able to hit. Um, all of this testing was done on a fairly moderate, just developer grade uh, environment with a moderate amount of RAM and CPU. About three months later, by October 2020, we were at 800,000 transactions per second. And by the time we released the beta version in September 2021, so that was about uh, six -ish, five, six months ago, we were able to reach and slightly exceed the 1 million transaction per second target, which is really the target that we have. For the production release, and so as we prepare for being able to produce uh, to have a production release that's ready by about July 2022, what we're looking at is 
um, fleshing out the functionality and stabilizing all that's required for, for um, releasing and having this ready to go into, into the wild. All of this benchmark testing was done in standalone environments though. So today what we focus on is what the last three months of effort of integrating tiger beetle into a modular central ledger environment, what, what some of those results look like, what that testing has told us about performance enhancements or even human enhancements where it be possible and what, what all of that has taken. Next slide, please, Jason. Thanks. So Tiger Beetle was designed and built with modules in mind, taking a lot of our learning and understanding, particularly from the center ledger. And so it, it's finely tuned and, and well focused on what, 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 that, what that logic needs to be, what that logic could be, and what that could mean for, for performance. And so Jason has focused um, quite a, a good amount of his time over the last three months in integrating Tiger Beetle into the central ledger and then testing what the performance outcomes are. And we are currently in the, in, in the phase where the heavy lifting that Tiger Beetle takes on is processing the two-phase commits natively. It is batching transactions. It is implementing the logic around ledger validation and balance tra tracking. And it's taking on the responsibilities around safety, around redundancy, and uh, being fault aware and fault, not, not even just tolerating, but recovering from, from fault that could potentially lead to data loss. And so really supporting resiliency and the overall quality of, of data across the cluster. And so the next phase, which will take us to July 2020, 2022, so July this year, will focus on or at least continue to integrate more, to integrate Tiger Beetle further into modern um, One of the additional areas of, of heavy lifting that we're looking to take on uh, from the application data, from the relational databases, is lookups and, and query capabilities. So we're really interested in seeing how, how implementing and fine-tuning queries and lookup capabilities around accounts, around transfers and batches, and really wide range, uh, wide range time period query, how that can improve that office processing. So settlement and reconciliation and reporting. So that's it for me in terms of introducing some of the work that we've done and what we are doing. And Jason, can I hand over to you to take us through the rest? <clears throat> sure. Thank you, Silly. So uh, everyone can hear me? Yes, we can. Thanks, Simeon. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Jason Rivera, part of the Quill team working on Tiger Beetle and Moduloop. I will be covering the testing of Moduloop Central Ledger as well as introducing Tiger Beetle to the Moduloop stack in today's presentation. The decision was made to make use of JMeter as performance, stress, and functional testing tool, as this is a mature and open testing solution with lots of features. Okay, so it was required that custom components were developed to get, a, uh, to get cl as close as possible to a real world transaction scenarios. The result meant that additional endpoints were required on central ledger to take full advantage of the measurements. In addition to the new endpoints, bespoke JMeter adapters were developed to generate test data as well as caption measurement for those for JMeter analysis. There is a direct benefit for the Modulib stack here. Although only central ledger is being supported initially, the tooling would allow us to expand to more of the Modulib stack, if not all. Highly customizable tooling that tests all of the aspects of central ledger offers having the ability to generate dynamic input data and being able to apply the generated input data to any central ledger environment as of today. Okay, so that, that's the approach we, we, we took. And then our, our, our test environment is basically, uh, as you can see on the, the left-hand side of the screen, JMeter can be, uh, is living outside of the Modulib stack, while the endpoints that uh, JMeter is talking to form part of a Modulib central ledger. The new JMeter REST endpoints are invoked to collect test results. These endpoints uh, directly tied into existing central ledger functionality and obviously uh, core central ledger functionality that had to be modified in order to accommodate uh, Tiger Beetle. And then central ledger runs in conjunction with Tiger Beetle and the traditional SQL DBMS, uh, as you can see in this example here. And then the integration functionality allows for on-off on, switch capability. So the integration between the two is, is quite seamless. You can either run with SQL DBMS in the traditional way as central ledger runs today, or you can run central ledger with Tiger Beetle and SQL DBMS enabled, so both. 
And then lastly, you can run uh, Tiger Beetle only mode, but this would only apply to transfers as, uh, as participation data and accounts would still use the traditional uh, DBMS. Okay, so that gives us a very nice overview of how the environment looks that we used to test with. Okay, now getting to the tooling. So as you can see, uh, the tooling is split into two areas. The first part on the left is the tools required for Mojo Loop slash center ledger in order to make things possible. The balance of the functionality is then what JMeter provides us out of the box. The first step, as you can, uh, which is over here, was uh, to configure the test data parameters slash barriers uh, and include things like the transfer amounts uh, that, that can uh, the transfer amounts that can be configurable, the number of accounts to be created, the number of transfers to perform during the execution run, and then the number of rejections to perform on those uh, transfers. So the, the, the first phase is really just to configure all of your test data and how random it should be and what mixture of uh, calls should be made on to central ledger. The second step is then to actually go and uh, configure that uh, uh, what we call the input data generation tool in order to generate random data based on parameters and barriers from step one. The output of this da data is what can then be used in any central ledger environment. Okay, the first step is where we're getting more into the JMeter tooling side of things. And this is where we're configuring JMeter properties such as the number of threads, the user, the, the users, the warm up account, the behavior in, the behavior in case of uh, if errors were encountered. So those are just really setting JMeter on how heavily you want to hit the system and uh, what the behavior of it should be. And then finally, the last step is to run the actual test and to analyze the outcome. And the idea here is that you would keep doing this until you've stretched every piece of the system to its full capacity. So keep in mind that we have, we're basically at the beginning of this, of this phase uh, today. So there's still lots more to unpack you know, in the next uh, coming months. All right. Okay, so the, the scenarios that we wanted to cover is basically the creation of accounts, doing transfers, doing account lookups, and doing transfer lookups. So if we're looking at the creation of accounts, uh, non-existing participants and accounts will be created as part of the run. Existing accounts will be queried from Redis based on particular name and fetch from SQL DBMS if not available in Redis. We obviously want the cache in there. And then the account creation will include participant, account, currency, and ledger data. The second uh, step block over here is the actual transfer. So as we, all of most of us are very aware of the, the two phase commit process of the transfers. The first phase is obviously to prepare the transfer with all of its necessary transfer data. And then the second phase is to commit that prepared transfer to finalize the transaction. And then alternatively, you would, uh, you might, uh, the, the original prepared might be reversed in the event of like a timeout or a fault or an actual explicit revert operation. Okay, so that covers our transfer. Uh, the account lookup then would be based on participant name and currency. The current account positions are also included in the account data. And then also our account uh, accounts are stored in the, the traditional SQL DBMS, as well as Target Beetle and Redis. So obviously you need your accounts in all three of those. And then lastly, the lookups of the actual transfers. So the, currently the transfers are just being fetched by UUID, but future releases of Target Beetle, uh, Target Beetle specifically would allow for range queries. That's something that we're quite excited about. Uh, the current release already supports batch transfer lookups. Interesting. Let me see. Okay, so there's, that, there's the scope. The next step is, or the next screen we're looking at here is the actual test configuration. So this should be uh, a config file that's familiar to people that have been working on Central Ledger. So the Tiger Beetle integration into Central Ledger is, is extremely seamless, as I've already mentioned. The default.json Central Ledger configuration file is used to enable or disable Tiger Beetle. Features such as batching may be enabled, which is ideal for back office processing. So in, in the Tiger Beetle section in the default.json config file, all of the Target Beetle's apl applicable configs will be there. And the idea is that with this config alone, you will be able to switch Target Beetle on and off in a central ledger deployment. Okay, the next part here is where 
some of the bespoke development had to take place. So the bespoke central ledger plugin was developed to ensure the most accurate, accurate measurements are taken during the test runs. Uh, this may easily be executed to test more of the modulib stack as mentioned before. But for this specific plugin, which is this stress test mapping sampler, we've got two parameters that may be configured here. The first being the, 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 the generated data. The idea here is that you will generate a random set of data and being able to apply that set of data to different environments so that your, your input remains static, but your output is different based on the environment, the software or hardware stack you're running at the back or what, you know, what, what, whichever it might be uh, even beyond that. As including like different network configurations. And then uh, lastly, it's just a URL, the endpoint that you're gonna test against. And in this case, it's obviously the central ledger uh, endpoint. All right, uh, next step is, as mentioned before, now it's starting to play with the actual behavior uh, for each run cycle. And then important items to notice on this screen is the, the actions to be taken in case of an error. You obviously, in some cases, you, you want to stop testing as soon as an error occurs, or you might not care. You, you want to let the system continue and see what happens in the event of X amount of errors occurring. So depending on that, you want to you know, tweak the, the behavior here. And then uh, obviously the number of threads are very important, which is the number of concurrent hits. And then obviously things like the ramp appear to do some meta tweaking and then lastly the the amount of times the the test should run for if you can obviously set it up to run for days if you want to uh, get some you know, a lot of variable inputs okay so then the next part here is where we where we're configuring the randomness of the data that we need that we're going to basically be heading into the system or into central ledger so the de definition of this uh, test data file is uh, from top to bottom we've got the participant accounts so these are just the number of random accounts to generate. So it obviously it will have an impact on how many accounts you actually generate. And it, it also tests inter interesting things like, like the, uh, the Redis lookups and Tiger Beta lookups and, and just a whole bunch of things. And, and uh, so yeah, this, this, this is actually quite a key, a key config. And then uh, the second one here is the number of account lookups to throw in between. So obviously it all depends on your number of transfers you're performing. You can't have more, you, you can have actually more transfer lookups than actual transfer. So this allows you then to further throw in transfers in between the actual transaction processing. And then uh, the third item here is the number uh, of uh, transactions to actually generate. So this will, however many you, you specify, those number of random transactions will be uh, generated. Of course, things like uh, the UUID for the transfers needs to be always unique. So those get actually generated on the fly. Okay, and then the trans transfer lookups are obviously the number of lookups that we, we would be performed using the UUID. And then the next one is a, is a nifty one to have. So this is where you, in cases where you don't actually want to perform a two-phase commit or you want to, as part of the same uh, REST request, you want to perform the commit because you don't, you, you don't want to disconnect the prepare and the fulfill or the, or the, uh, yeah, the, the two, the separate the two, the two-phase commit, you would rather want to prepare it and commit immediately in one rest request to take the full measurement of how both ran. That's a, a, a nifty one to have. And then uh, the second last one is just uh, the maximum amount for transactions that you generate. Uh, in case of limits, it's obviously going to be very important that you don't want to exceed limits. So you can have much lower uh, transaction amounts. And then lastly, the currency that you're going to use for, the, for these accounts. So currently, we're not doing more than one currency. It's just stick to a single currency, and it's doing transfers on that currency only. OK, so uh, the, uh, getting to the endpoint. So these are the REST endpoints that were added to Central Ledger Core uh, in, 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 in order to do this testing, because the, the goal here was to get as close as the pulse as possible to get the, the most realistic and accurate measurements out of the system. And as mentioned before, these endpoints tie directly into the core central ledger functionality. And the endpoints that we exposed were to retrieve participant accounts by name, uh, to retrieve transfers by ID, to retrieve ILP transactions, uh, to create uh, position and settlement accounts, uh, to prepare a transfer, to commit a transfer, and to revert the transfer. Uh, and we also, uh, the having these endpoints enabled or disabled is also a config. You don't uh, want these endpoints to be enabled in production environments, of course. 
Okay, so uh, yeah, so the generated this is an example of the how the JSON looks for the generated input test data. So this is the data that you that you're actually going to be uh, in, invoking in all of these different environments. So in, if we look at the parent action type field over here, uh, that action type field will be available or is applicable to all of the requests and the inner JSON of each of these requests will be specific to the type of request. So the inner body for each of these action types will be different depending on uh, what, what it needs to do. So in this, in this case, it's creating a participant. So it's, it needs a name and a currency. When you're doing a transfer prepare, the data is different again where we need to provide the payer, the amount, and the, all the other data that goes with it. And then, uh, yeah, obviously with having this, we have the ability to predict the hardware and software requirements for each customer TPS baseline. So uh, the, the great thing is that you, you're working with, a, with something static, which is your data that you can then apply on any of your software and hardware environments to, to, to get like the ideal scenario for a customer. And, and, and customers can even run this in their own infrastructure so that they can see whether they need to maybe upgrade or whether they have sufficient uh, provision for the environment to run uh, the module loop stack or central ledger in this case. All right, so uh, here's an example of actually running the test. So you will never actually, uh, well, in, if you're really gonna hit the system hard, you typically would run JMeter in a console mode where you don't want any graphical updates. You, you wanna thrash it real hard. So you'll run it in console mode usually, but in this example, you would, it's being run with the, the user interface, the GUI. And uh, we can see uh, while, while it's running, you can actually look at very fine detail on each of those requests. So uh, on this screen, if you click uh, on the JMeter console, you're able to see the actual request body that was sent. Uh, we can see at the bottom, as well as storing some additional values. Like in this case, the test data index refers to the actual index of the, the, the generated test data it, it took to send that request in. So if your random data uh, crea creates a scenario where it's actually a failure, you are able then to see the failure, detect the failure and go and see exactly what the, the request body looked like that caused that failure. So obviously when you are, are flashing a system and generating a lot of random data and trying to overthrow it, you, you wanna be able to go back and, and see what overthrow, overthrew it at the end of the day and being able to recreate those steps. And that's what's basically uh, happening over here. Okay, and then lastly, or well, not lastly, but uh, the, the actual findings. So this now uh, was the initial findings that we ran uh, Tiger Beetle with, uh, being enabled in Center Ledger and being disabled. So please keep in mind that, that all of these tests were performed with less than ideal hardware and software. And uh, the existing Docker Compose for Center Ledger were, were modified and used as testing environment even as far as Tiger Beetle actually running uh, as part of the Node.js instance. So even, you know, again, it's, it's a very shared stack. So these stats aren't at all reflecting what a production system would look like. Um, and if we go further in looking at the actual results without Tiger Beetle here, we can see obviously 175 milliseconds on average response times. We're feeding around uh, 17 uh, transactions per second. And some of the transactions taking even up to 18, 18 seconds. So keeping in mind that again, you're flashing the system. So obviously there's gonna be this, this performance and hitting the traditional uh, SQL DBMS. And now looking at the bottom over here with Tiger Beetle enabled, we're able to reach 64 times the baseline basically, which is great. Um, and then we've got uh, basically a three, three milliseconds round trip hitting 1,102 1, transactions per second. And then our max transaction uh, time being around 80 milliseconds, which is great. I mean, and the, as you can see, the line is obviously it speaks volumes because you you, you basically uh, have a lot more stability. There's the standard deviation is a lot a lot lower in comparison in compared to running a traditional uh, DBMS. So yeah, the standard deviation without uh, Tiger Beetle sits at uh, 50 around 1500. Compared to Tiger Beetle, it sits at two. So you you basically the result here is that you've got much increased predictability, consistency, and improved performance throughout. Because this this then makes it very, uh, very easy for for one to, yeah, to measure. And, and obviously the, uh, the the throughput is just always static. So the predictability predictability is just all the way up there, which is what you want. 
So, you know, as I mentioned, we this is just the initial findings. I think uh, the future is going to be a lot more promising, and we, we can keep enhancing. So, so this is just uh, uh, like a the, the beginning of things to come, basically. All right. Uh, <clears throat> so, what's the next step? So, we're planning the first production release of Tiger Beetle by July. So, there's lots of excitement around that, uh, and then. At this, uh, right before that, we'll be uh, releasing the JMeter test suite for Central Ledger. So all of the components would be would be becoming part of the Central Ledger repo and can be ran by and used by anyone. So it's going to be open there for everyone to just use and, and keep enhancing on. So that's going to be going to be really good. And then uh, yeah, for the next demo, we're going to we're going to we're going to be showcasing the production release, which is going to be in July. And then a uh, very very important thing is obviously for our V next we. We also need to uh, assess all of the, the possible possibilities for, for Tiger Beetle into the, the V next build, of course, which is uh, of, uh, very high importance for us as well. All right. And then uh, uh, you, you guys will be able to go look at an extended uh, in depth video uh, over the next week. It's going to be on the Tiger Beetle channel on YouTube. So please, if you haven't subscribed yet, please go and subscribe and uh, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll. Share it on the the Modulo General uh, channel as soon as the the performance video is out, which will delve into much more detail on how everything was uh, configured and ran and all of that type of things. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Samir and Cindy. Um, thanks, Jason. Um, I see some questions in the chat, uh, but we're running out of time. I'll just let you respond to the first two. Michael is asking, what's the definition of a transaction? And then there's a second one there by uh, Douglas Jackson about sharding. Uh, sorry, I'm just stopping my screen share here. So yeah, I'm sure. Gonna, uh, kind of just going up in the questions. Uh, um, take the last two. The first one from Michael uh, Richards is what's the definition of? Exactly. So the, the, I suppose the definition in transaction in this case is, is a prepared and fulfill. So one one transaction would be would be regarded as that. Although in the in the running of the demo, it only dealt with doing prepares. So we we wanted to keep it atomic in that sense, so that uh, you know we're testing end to end. But yes, depending on on on, on your on your configuration, a transaction can either be just a, a, a prepare or it needs to be both. Uh, yeah, I hope that answers the question. Okay, given that target beetle um, might generate a lot of ledger data, might sharding be needed? And if so, are there any particular impediments, ex example, in relation to use of hash chaining? Okay, yeah, I think Yuran would be able to uh, answer this question a lot better than I would be. And, uh, are, yeah, are I see your uh, Yaron's response there in the chat. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then, uh, oh, oh, I just realized my chat screen is very really small. That's why I'm missing all of it. Okay, I believe this is what I was looking for. Thank you. No, yeah. that's all right. Um, um, I think I'll pass it, uh, Jason. I think I'll pass. Um, we'll leave it at that. And uh, thank you so much for that really great update. Um, do give us your feedback to everyone. Please do give us your feedback on the polls there. Um, um, and it's and I will also point everybody back to Slack um, just so that if anybody has any further questions or discussions, uh, please use the module of Slack to to follow up. Um, so this brings an end to our second day of the convening.